Hello, my friend. Do you know what is in your custody? Do you know the value of what you have in your hands? Do you, my friend, know the true cost of your pleasures? To begin today's session, I would like you to ponder on the questions you have just heard. Once again, they are, do you know what is in your custody? Do you know the value of what you have in your hands? Do you, my friend, know the true cost for your pleasures? To understand why those questions, let us take a look at what God's word says about a true incident that happened many years ago in scriptures. One that we all should definitely learn from. In Matthew, my friend, the 14th chapter, the 6th verse, the Bible says, But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod, whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. And she, being before instructed of her mother, said, Give me here John Baptist's head in a charger. And the king was sorry, nevertheless, for the host's sake, and them which sat with him at meat, he commanded it to be given to her. The occasion was a birthday event. The performer was a young lady, a diva, as some would call her today. The performance was a dance, a very pleasurable one. The prize was anything she wanted, but the cost was the life and head of a prophet of God who had nothing to do with the event in question. The tactics was one of manipulation and deception. And Herod's reaction was nothing more than a sorry moment, a brief moment of being sorry. This, my friend, is the summary of all that scripture says. Beyond what it says, however, and what God wants us to learn from it is what today's session is about. Firstly, my friend, we understand that the goal of Herodias' daughter's dance wasn't just to, to please Herod and his guests, but to get something, to get the head of the prophet who wasn't even at the party. We can conclude by saying that the enemy doesn't just want to please and entertain you, he wants what you have in your custody. This is because John had been arrested and imprisoned by Herod. He was now in the custody of Herod. The true cost, my friend, of ungodly pleasure sometimes is something or someone or some place that is valuable to you that you normally would not want to sacrifice as part of that pleasure. Every time ungodly pleasures are entertained, someone and something gets sacrificed and many times this happens behind the scenes. About the occasion, for example, it was a feast, a birthday, a moment of celebration and entertainment of someone that would ultimately lead to the mourning and sorrow and sadness and pain for many others. We as children of God must be careful to not sponsor occasions and events that would cost us our own lives, our minds, or our faith, or those of our loved ones. We must be discerning of events of occasions and of moments. The performer is the enemy and the enemy is always a liar and a deceiver, a master of manipulations and deception. He will never come out plainly. He will always throw a bait for his prey to get them committed. He knows what to say and how to say them so that his true intent is never revealed. He knows how to continue in the shadow he lurks on in darkness, taming and enticing, pleasing and taking the gullible and all that are theirs, and he does so with a deceptive smile on his face, but without any show of mercy. As believers, we must be vigilant of this roaring lion that consistently seeks who to devour. The performance was a dance, a challenge, you may say, 
if she took up the challenge and performed to the pleasing of the birthday celebrant and his guests, she could have anything that she wanted and would receive any global award and recognition that she so desired. God's word, my friend, warns you and I to not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. The prize, on the other hand, was anything she would ask. Ask yourself, my friend, why such a huge promise over a dance? Why even confirm it with an oath? Because many men are slaves to pleasures and they would do anything to get the extra, the highest pleasures they can find. They don't mind even a close call with death. They will pay any price for a new high, a different experience and to see their sensual desires met. God's word, my friend, tells us to not be envious of such people and to not desire to be like them or pay their kinds of prices for ungodly pleasures. The actual cost, my friend, was John's head, the prophet in Herod's custody. The dance at the corridors of death ultimately led to Herod offering John's head easily even though before this night he had refused to do the same thing because he feared what the people would say knowing that John was a prophet. However, because of one night's pleasure from one young lady, he cared little about the prophet, his believers, the people and even his own restraints. Ungodly pleasures, my friend, make men break rules and principles. The reaction of Herod afterwards was very brief and momentary. It was nothing but regrets of a short time span, but those who loved him, who followed and who believed in John, lived with the consequence of that one night pleasure dance challenge. Once again, my friend, I ask you, what is in your custody? Do you know the value of what you have? Do you know what the enemy is really after? He wants not just to offer you pleasures, but more than anything, he wants what is in your hand. He wants your time, your energy, your life, your job, your children, your marriage, your blessings, and everything of worth and value to you. For example, in helping people over many years, I have met many grown adults. I have met many grown adults who got into troubles from their own parents' entertainments and pleasures. Take for example, a common one that I have seen again and again is the story of people who first stumbled upon pornography while their parents, guardians, uncles and older siblings were watching the same. Some of those children stayed enslaved for many years and had constant struggles, sometimes even for decades. In such cases, the true cost of those parents' entertainments or pleasures were the lives, the happiness, and the sexual sanity of their own children. The enemy wasn't just out to entertain the parents, he was out to get the head of their children, to get the children enslaved for many years to come. We must remember that even as godly entertainment, exercises, fun, and merrymaking have some profit to us as believers we must not deny the potential risks the dangers and the costs of ungodly pleasures of all forms in the scripture above we find the account of the events that led to the death by beheading of one of the greatest prophets before jesus according to jesus himself in matthew the 11th chapter and the 11th verse the headlines of the daily tabloids and newspapers in the morning that followed that feast or party would be all pleasurable for some people. There may not even be any mention of the prophet's death. Rather, the trending topic would be the princess wows with her dance moves. Or it may sound like princess's first public dance or the princess thrills the entire audience with pleasure. In our world today, it would probably go viral as everyone watches, likes, shares and tweets and causes to trend this celebrity princess's dance of the past night. 
in the camp of the believer, however, there would be mourning and sorrow, and reports may sound like popular prophet dies in prison, or great prophet dies by beheading, or the believers mourn one of their own. The question is, what is the true cost of the pleasures that men seek? What else is being paid besides money, fame, entertainment, and pleasure? In the case of prophet John the Baptist, the true cost of the princess's dance was his life. A great man died because a king and his guests desired so much from pleasures. They wanted a pleasurable dance. For the Bible says, she danced before them and pleased Herod. Wisdom, my friend, requires that every believer ask the question, what is the enemy really after? Why is our world full of so much ungodly pleasures today? And who is after my head? Who wants to be entertained so badly that he would give the life of another up for his own pleasure? God, my friend, expects you and I to be vigilant and to intentionally be watchful always. If anyone had told John that he would die at the request of a princess for her dancing, he may never have believed it. Today, my friend, several forms of pleasure and entertainments are constantly rolled out by individuals, by organizations, and by corporations that ultimately end up being paid for with all or part of people's lives. We must not let the enemy take our heads or that of our children or loved ones because of the entertainment or pleasure we or anyone around us seek. We must be vigilant as true sons and daughters of God. Stay vigilant, my friend, as God bless you.